presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons taking on Sam Darnold and the Carolina Panthers. The weather this time of year in the South, perfect. Fall football weather, and we've got the roof wide open here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the heart of Georgia. We thought the old place was loud. Somehow this place got even louder a short time ago as the Falcons were introduced to this sellout crowd. We're set to go as the Falcons get ready to match up with the Carolina Panthers. Hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon along with Charles Davis. And Charles, we take a look at this Falcons team as they interplay. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape... Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Well, the Falcon offense about ready to go to work here for the first time and leading them as he has since 2008 is the veteran quarterback, former MVP, Matt Ryan. Okay, I'm not taking a turn to negative town, even though it's going to sound like it. The two interceptions he threw last week, those obviously have to be eliminated, and that was the focus of practice this week. But let's face it, he did throw three touchdown passes. And they got the win. And they got the win, so I think it was a good week for him to work on things had some positives, the win being first and foremost. Now he's just got to eliminate those interceptions. So a nice catch right there. And this receiving core, without their number one wideout, keep that in mind, he's inactive this week, though it shouldn't be a long-term absence. And I would think, partner, that this is where an offensive coordinator believes he can solve the problem by spreading the ball around. Because anytime you lose your number one guy, it's obviously a blow to your offense. But it's also an opportunity to say, hey, they can't focus on trying to stop one guy, keep spreading it around. The last part, each one of those receivers, they believe they're the number one guy, and they're ready to step up. The numbers for Pitts in that game a week ago. Three catches, 106 yardage-wise, and the score as well. And he's able to pull that last pass in, but this is usually a pretty tough unit to try and maneuver against. They're in the top 10 in the league against the pass, and you and I both know there's not much difference between 1 and 10. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Ryan will throw again. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. Strong run, but still wrangled before reaching the 20. On third down, Ryan. And he's got it. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Beautiful throw right there on third down. And it looked like this was going to be six points. But a nice touchdown saving tackle at the end of this. Even still, this offense is knocking on the door now with a first and goal at the one. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door. First and goal. Hunt. 
And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. So often you hear that pep talks don't really work in the heat of the battle, but collectively, this defense has to say to each other, we've been on our heels this whole first drive. This is where we need to dig in. And they got a nice stop right there for a loss on first and goal. Again, it's Hunt. And he pushes forward, but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, and now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. Kyle Pitts, his second touchdown on the season. And the Falcons take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. A long opening drive, but a very successful opening drive. We call that methodical, I guess, when it takes that many plays. Methodical and almost like a boxing match where you're hitting them with body blows. They can withstand them here. Look, they gave up the touchdown, but you don't feel like a knockout is there. But they keep doing that in the fourth quarter. That's when the knockout occurs. And it becomes tough for that defense if they're on the field that long. We'll see if they can continue that in future drives. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And Smith chooses not to return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. But here we go for the first time with the Panthers offense led out by their new quarterback for 2021 in his fourth season overall now after three with the Jets. It's Sam Darnold. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an interception. Pick. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. First carry for Christian McCaffrey. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big game. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash, too. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Arnold. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Darnold now to throw. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. To throw again on second down. Darnold. And his throw here is incomplete. And, Charles, you think about what this defense has had to prepare for. They're in for a battle. I mean, they're facing a team that is working on a six-game winning streak. And that can be intimidating when you think about it in those terms. But I think what they need to do is make some sort of a statement early in this game, whether it's a turnover, a takeaway, a key sack on third down, a three and out. 
Something lets the other guys know that you mean business. Figuratively, throw the first punch and make it a good one. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 30. Defensively, they came into the game with the understanding they're going to have to slow him down on passes just like this because he was over 100 yards receiving a week ago. And you know they want to get him involved here as well. So first and 10 now from the 30. A fake to McCaffrey. Now Darnold. Got a man right side. It's McCaffrey. That catch good for only a couple. Throwing again is Darnold. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Down Darnold. Again, he finds more. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Darnold will hand off to McCaffrey. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Back to throw, Darnold. He's got it for a Panther touchdown. Dan Arnold, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Panthers are now an extra point away from tying up this game. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Extra point attempt here still to come. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. No run back here. Down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time, too. They had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Out of the gun, they run it with Hunt. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Ryan. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Second and 10. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, He's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. From the down, Ryan. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts. 
So as they take it over, we step aside. The Falcons send out their punter. Christian McCaffrey deep for Carolina. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Panthers will take over now first and ten. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. And now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. He's going to look deep for more. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A big play there for Carolina. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. To throw is Darnold. Over the middle, complete. That's more. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Darnold on third down. He finds his man complete. It's Moore. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Gotta say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Now a first and 10 at the 11. A shotgun snap for Darnold. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Here's second and 10. Darnold to throw again. And that will be caught by Moore. He's got a Panthers touchdown. David Moore, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Panthers have taken the lead. CD for them, this has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment and you have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Slide for the PAT. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. That time, a six-play drive. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. From the shotgun, Ryan. Swings this out for Hunt. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. 
As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. From the 45 on second down, Ryan. And he completes it to Hunt. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Throwing again, Ryan. Philip Dorsett hauls it in. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. First and ten, it's Ryan. And that would off the mark behind him, incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. From the gun, it's Ryan. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlines, but incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. And his kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we're at halftime here on Halloween. As we head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, make sure you avoid the crazies out there and welcome in everybody to this Halloween edition of our EA Sports Halftime Report. We'll start up at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. And they are seconds away from halftime, all tied in that one. From there, we'll make the trip down to Indianapolis to check on the Colts at home at Lucas Oil Stadium. And they trail in that ball game to the visiting Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill looking good. Two touchdown passes. Finally, let's get down to Houston. Check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And you can see there, it's the visiting L.A. Rams who have the lead in that one. Two touchdown passes for Matthew Stafford. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Here's Smith to return it. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. So here are the Panthers set to take over. Their win streak at six coming in and counting as they've got the lead right now beginning this drive first and 10. Here's Darnold. Got his man, Robbie Anderson. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 42 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Darnold. Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Matthew Ioannidis forced his way through, drops him for a loss of 10 yards. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Second and 20. Another try after the first down sack. Darnold, he's going to look deep for more. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. 
And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Now on is the punter, Charlton, now as he's able to get this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, okay, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Looking to throw again on second down. Ryan, his throw incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Ryan. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. Have a Falcons first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll run with Hump. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Ryan gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers 42. A great job there in that old cliche, taking what the defense gives you comes right into play. Nothing too out of the ordinary about the throw. Just a little dump off over the middle. But what is out of the ordinary is what he did with it after the catch. Not only did he grab the ball, but how about the significant yardage he picked up after he pulled it in? On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. The last run got six, now second and four. Now Ryan. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Hunt. First down as the tackle's made at the Panthers' 25-yard line. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. They'll run on first down. Hunt, and he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll run again with Hunt, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. third quarter of action you are watching the nfl on ea sports from the 13 now they work on first and 10. here's ryan and a quick throw here that's complete and the falcons are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three yard line they go play action with ryan and he is going to go down back at the 11-yard line. Shaq Thompson came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. That I'm struggling to understand a little bit. That close to the goal line, first down, run the football. If you want to throw it, throw some play action on second down. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Left, 
A carry here for Hunt. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Kareem Hunt with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Falcons have retaken the lead. People always talk about one of his biggest strengths running the football vision, and he found the spot there, went into the end zone. You're exactly right about that. It wasn't just the vision, right? Once he saw the gap, decisiveness, made up his mind, and about the power to finish the play. Not only did he get good blocking, he created his own space as well. Ku able to connect on the extra point. It's now 17-14. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Here's Smith to return it. And with a marker down, he's up just past the 25-yard line, but I think they're going to be going backwards. Let's check the call. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now it's Darnold. He's going to look deep for more. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked off by A.J. Terrell. And the Falcons are in great shape here as they take over at their 46-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with during a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. After the interception, here's Ryan. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. From midfield now, here's Ryan. And this one's incomplete. The Falcons on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. Now Ryan. And he comes back with one complete. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. The Falcons send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. And it's a fake here on fourth and inches. And this is caught. And the fake will work. He's going to have a first down. Now this works, so I guess I shouldn't be nitpicking too much, but they only had a couple of inches to go. Why fake punt? Yeah, I'm with you on that one. If you're going to go ahead and try and pick it up in that short of a distance, I wouldn't even go on to fake punt formation. This is like using up a big play for no reason at all. Leave your offense on the field and pick it up. But again, what were we doing? We're nitpicking, yeah, right? Because they did get it. It worked. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Here's Ryan to throw. Short throw caught by Pitts. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. As a defense, you're more bounced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. 
They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Whistles now at a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. All right, second down, right back to Hunt. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Now the Panthers going to signal for their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they will take a knee here. Second and 11. On the counter, Hunt. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 63 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. I guess he was saving his best for last, so to speak. Longest run of the day coming here in the fourth quarter right there. And that type of run makes for a better night for him and his teammates, doesn't it? To be able to produce this late in the game can lead to some big smiles and satisfaction in the locker room after this one's over. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Ryan heads down to a knee, and that should wrap this one up. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was.